The future is a place that we strive to go. Let's build it together so we can eventually navigate the stars at our will and with our technology. Join me as we create the future. Hey everyone, it's Johnny Five. I'm going to start doing videos on some of the basic components of electric cars. I wanted to go over what components actually go into these vehicles and what they do and some of the terminology that goes along with that. So today I'm going to start this video by going over contactors. What is a contactor? What does it do? And what types of contactors are there inside of an electric vehicle? So let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, this is a contactor. A contactor is basically a electromechanical switch. And what that means is when you supply 12 volts to the positive and negative on these wires right here, it latches this contactor here. There's basically uh, a piston that comes up that is controlled by the coil that is driven by this voltage and it latches these two points together. And so, in an electric vehicle, there's no, there's no way to really switch the power aside from doing it like this. So, with that being said, there are a couple different types of contactors. There is the contactor, this one is a GV200PA, and this is a non-economized contactor. What does that mean? Well, a non-economized contactor is simply put that when you supply 12 volts to this, this coil will latch and it will pull as many amps as it can to stay latched. And basically what I mean by that is there's no electronic PWM switching or anything inside of here to lessen the amperage going to this coil once it's latched. It's just gonna pull the current that it's gonna pull because there's nothing but a coil inside of this that latches this contactor. Now, this one is the GV200MA. And what this one is, is an economized contactor. And what economized means is, when I supply this power, or when I supply power to these two cables, the 12 volts, Inside there's a little little circuit board that actually latches this contactor and then it draws the amperage back down so that this coil isn't pulling maximum amperage after it's latched. You only really need that current to latch the contactor, but once it's latched, it does not need to stay at a high amperage anymore. It can use a very little amount of amperage to stay latched. So that's what's going on inside of here. Now, some cars have a non-economized contactor because what happens is this uh, power is controlled by a circuit board that takes care of that PWM uh, switching and gives us the, uh, the less current it needs after it latches. Sometimes electric cars, and in a lot of cases, uh, custom electric cars need an economized contactor because uh, most, time, most of the time the electronics inside of the, uh, with your EV don't have the, the economization um, mechanism to take control or take care of the, uh, the latching control on the contactor. So, that's what's going on inside of this. Now, I have this power supply right here. It's an analog power supply. And what we're gonna do is hook up each one of these contactors and we're gonna take a look at how that actually looks as far as current draw. And you'll get to see what it means when we're talking about a non-economized versus an economized contactor. So let's go ahead and wire that up to each one of these and demonstrate what's going on. Okay, first up is the non-economized contactor, the GV200PA. And I have it hooked up to my analog power supply because 
it has a nice analog gauge so that way you can see the physical movement uh, with the current draw. I have this set right now on my switch to see up to six amps of current draw and I have my voltage set to 13.5 volts. So we'll go ahead and turn it on and you can see what happens. Okay, so as you would suspect, the contactor has latched and it is pulling a little over two amps. And if you notice, it did exactly what you would think it would do, is it would climb up to the current needed latch and it stays right at a little over two amps. Now, what's bad about that is eventually this thing's gonna get extremely hot to the point where it will fail. And if you don't have an economizer externally to bring the current up and then drop it back down, this thing will eventually just fail. So that is what a non-economized contactor does. So let's go ahead and hook up the economized contactor and watch how that works. Okay, now we have the GV200MA hooked up to our DC power supply. Now this one is the economized contactor. Now here's a fun part. You'll get to see what an economizer actually does inside of a contactor. Now, notice how the amps are almost at zero. Uh, it looks like about one fourth of an amp, somewhere around there. So basically what happened was as soon as this contactor latched, it dropped current so that it won't burn up the coil inside of here. And that's what's going on with an economized contactor. Now let's watch it again and you can see what happens. Notice the contactor drops. Let's turn it back on. And there it is. You see that quick jump is basically what's happening. It is, it gives it full current until that contactor latches and then it drops back down until it gives it minimum current to hold that contactor latched. And that's basically it. That is the difference between an economized contactor and a non-economized contactor inside of an electric vehicle. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this. And I'm gonna be doing a whole lot more of these videos just to explain the basic pieces of equipment going on inside of an electric vehicle. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos and thanks for watching. All right, bye.